So we learnt on Monday's show then that mums on the lowest incomes are eight times more at risk of losing their jobs while the schools are closed and twice as many mums report having to take time off with no pay in these times as fathers. I spoke to Felicia Willow. Uh, she's the Chief Executive Officer of the Fawcett Society, who commissioned the research. As well as the polling, we've been doing coronavirus diaries. So we've actually um, had a number of women across the country in very different situations, keeping diaries, um, answering different questions as we go along. And there's just lots of messages of people being overwhelmed. You know, there's so much that people have to do and women especially. So we're seeing obviously the pressure of homeschooling is enormous. I have two children myself. I really get it. Um, but there's also other caring responsibilities. There's worrying about family members. Um, and a lot of that is really um, pressing down on women. Is it though? I mean, why not the men? Surely they're in exactly the same boat, aren't they? In many ways with the things you're listing there. I think that when we've actually seen how it's fallen, um, it, it's been disappointing, but we've seen a lot of uh, kind of a a fallback on gender progress. So um, when these things have happened with homeschooling, I mean, right from the beginning, we saw women taking on an extra two hours at least of, of caring for children and homeschooling and losing two hours of paid time as compared with fathers. So even though fathers were increasing their time as well, it wasn't nearly where at the rate of, of, of the mothers. So I think we, we've seen this time and again. We've also seen um, gender things happen. Like in the second shutdown, we saw retail and hospitality being shut down, which is where women are predominantly employed, whereas construction and manufacturing, we see uh, higher numbers of men that was kept open. So there's been things throughout that, you know, added up together, have a really disproportionate impact on women over men. Mm. Uh, it was very interesting. If you missed any of that, it was on Monday's programme. Catch it on BBC Sounds with Felicia Willow then from the Fawcett Society and the research they commissioned. It's tough, isn't it? It is tough, whatever your circumstances, but you can appreciate it's particularly tough if you're doing all of this on your own as a single parent and working as well. Uh, Ellis Wolby is that person, really. She's a single mum to Alexander, who's 10. They live in Cheltenham with their 10-month-old puppy. And Ellis is also working from home full-time as a solicitor for Harrison Clark Rickerby's. Hello. Good morning to you, Ellis. Hi. Hi there, Anna. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm, I feel tired just thinking about you <laughs> and your, your life at the moment. Thank you so much for taking... I appreciate your life must be super busy. And I no, it's a pleasure. I very much appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. We were discussing this before we came to you around the, the office and we thought you're either... You know, anybody's going to either be super organised or super laid back, but you're a solicitor, so you, it's got to be the super organised one, presumably. Well, yes. You, yeah, we like to think that we're a super organised bunch and um, good with time management, which, you know... We, we have to be, but this does take it to a whole new level. So, um, yes, I'd, I'd say I'd fall into that category. But, um, you know, you've, you've still got plenty to juggle um, and there's still that that feeling of of being overwhelmed. It You know, it doesn't uh, really make much difference just how organised you are. I think the lyrics from the song prior to, uh, to Taylor Swift, When Tomorrow Comes, we'll just do it all again. It's uh, very apt. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a feeling of Groundhog Day now? Yes. Yeah, I think so. It's... Um, I think when we first sort of started, you know, start of last month, there was a feeling of, you know, come on, one final push. But actually, with you know, especially with the extension of um, of school closures, it's now very much a case of reminding ourselves that, you know, this is very much a marathon, not a sprint. So, yes, just being kind, kind to ourselves as each day comes. Yeah, I think that's absolutely whatever circumstances, you're quite right. Be kind to mm. ourselves. Um, so give me a glimpse into a typical day then for you, for <laughs> Alexandra, how to do for your puppy. <laughs> How, how long have you got? Oh, go on, give um, it to me. Give it to me, girl. <laughs> well, it's um yeah, so we're up sort of six, six thirty to sort the dog out, to try and snooze for about half an hour thereafter, and then from that point onwards it's pretty much full on until about nine o'clock when Alex goes to bed. So it's you know, it's juggling the the sort of work, my role is as an employment lawyer, it's juggling Alex's homeschooling. And to give the teachers credit, I mean, you know, the amount of work that they prepped for the children this time round is is phenomenal. They've they've made a fantastic um, effort with that but obviously in turn that means that there's even more work to submit and there's supervision and IT support and just just motivation because you know our kids have had, quite frankly had enough now yeah, as well which makes it doubly as difficult. Yeah absolutely um, I mean at 10 I guess Alex is at that sort of in between stage where he's, he's possibly going to need a little bit of help and a bit of supervision but he's still starting to launch out then a bit more in the yeah. in being able to 
cope with things himself a bit more would you say or? yeah absolutely yeah no I, I am lucky I mean I've got some colleagues with um with children that are that are younger and I, I do feel for them because it's difficult I think yeah Alex is at that sort of sweet spot age where he will thankfully still listen to me some of the time but um <laughs> equally is yeah he's he's becoming a bit more independent but I think particularly being an only child and quite a sporty one as well I think he's missing out on friends and sports and I, I presume other parents are seeing the same thing which is I think children there's just no release of energy throughout the day so you'd be surprised how much energy gets used up in school in the playgrounds etc and particularly with this lockdown being in the middle of winter it's um yeah another sort of thing to kind of compound <laughs> the situation is just that absolute um, ball of energy that I think most children have, have now got that just isn't being used sure yeah so there's alex meet the puppy puppy, puppy meet alex you know if there's any time <laughs> downtime yeah you know burn it off together um so i'm imagining and it's sort of you know in, in my head that you've got like twin desks next to each other and you're we you're do. doing your work and oh, really tell me more yeah, about that <laughs> it is it's quite literally like that so um so i'm not at my what i would call my normal kind of home office area or desk i'm sort of just sort of sat at the dining table because yeah it's the best way that i can kind of keep an eye on him and, and make sure that um that he is working and not on youtube um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's quite nice because I mean, it gets it gets him next to me, it gives him the opportunity, I guess, to see mum working, which he doesn't normally get to see, which is quite nice, I suppose. It sort of encourages, you know, good work ethic, and um, it's it's good for him. But equally, obviously, I'm there to to support him and answer any questions, which. Um, yeah, it's great for him, not perhaps so great for concentration levels <laughs> with me working. Um, it's just a case of, you know, sort of stopping and starting and uh, and just going between and just trying to keep the, the plate spinning. Yeah. And I mean, as I say, as a solicitor, and the devil's in the detail for you. So you've got to be completely focused and triple check everything to make sure. Completely. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. That, that's an extra pressure. Who does the food though? When, when do you get time to you know <laughs> get the food on the table? Well, that's that's the thing. It gets to sort of half five and, you know, I'm sort of switching off and um, me, Alex's work has to be in by or should be. And I say has to be. It's encouraged to be in by by four o'clock. So it gets to kind of half five. Alex is done. I'm starting to sort of wind down and I just look around the house and it's the thought of, yes, that I need to get some dinner going, and get the dog fed. But also the house inevitably looks like something from the Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a bomb has gone off so it's um yeah it kind of you're sort of tired and you, you're done with the day when you get to that point um but then obviously it's sort of almost starting again with the whole clearing up food prep and then just the general you know it's boring to be speaking about it on radio but just the the normal household chores and cleaning and bins and all that stuff it's all still there to be done as another thing on top so um Yes, no, I, th yes. I think it, I know, but it is the minuto. It's the real things of life, isn't it? And I think there's an awful lot of people who'll be listening and go, "Yes, absolutely." You know, and I'm I, either they're in a similar situation to you, or even if they uh, they've got you know a partner t to help out, they're still feeling the pinch. So let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk some more then uh, with Ellis, uh, just to give an example, an idea, a little glimpse into somebody's life where you are a single mum in this instance, but a single parent if you like, with a, a school-aged child being uh, homeschooled and a puppy and working full-time at home um just you know where how do you spit up your day how you know how long are those lists well we'll talk about it more in a moment well, that's Queen and you're my best friend. Um, picture the scene then, you know, if you are homeschooling and homeworking at the moment, uh, trying to juggle everything and the food and the and the pets and, you know, all of those things. But then uh, add into the mix uh, being a single parent. That is the experience then uh, for Ellis Wolby in Cheltenham with 10-year-old Alex and their 10-month-old puppy. Uh, but she's also working full-time at home as a solicitor at Harrison Clark Rickaby. Uh, as well as uh, homeschooling uh, Alex and, um, you know, just trying to keep everything juggling. You must be a master list maker, I'm thinking, Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> I've got lists of lists. <laughs> are, they, yeah, are, no, they, are they pinned to the fridge or are you, you know, you've got multiple alarms on your phone or how does it, it just panic? cling, cling to my leather folio like it's the, the Bible? No, absolutely. It's um it's the only way you can keep on top of it. But equally, you know, if, if something slides, it's it's not the end of the world. It's um yeah, I'm I'm a Virgo, so I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but at the moment I just can't afford to be. So yeah, if if we're all living and breathing and we've been fed and watered by the end of the day that's fine <laughs> yeah, well it does it, you're so right it does change your outlook doesn't it sometimes on you yeah. know what is what is success what is failure what is achievement precisely all of those things um and you have argued also that there are positives as well as challenges in these times haven't you 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, sort of to go back to what I sort of said when Alex was, you know, in terms of him sort of sitting by me, I mean, it's demonstrating to him, you know, good work ethic. Um, and equally, it's it's time for me with him that, you know, that as a parent, you wouldn't normally you wouldn't normally have. I mean, I did find myself saying this or trying to think this last lockdown with the school closures, thinking it will never happen again. And, and here we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, time flies so quickly. So although it's it's a lot, I do sort of stop and take stock and just think to myself you know what you know he's he's not going to be 10 forever it's it's more time with him which is um you know a silver lining yeah and you do talk over i think this is very interesting you do talk openly you say with your son uh, and he's 10 just to remind people of the challenges and, and you don't try and hide your emotions i don't know if it's, some single parents would say well that is part of single parenthood anyway but um you know yeah. has that's a very deliberate thing for you yeah, it, it very much is. I mean, if, if Alex was, you know, four, five, six, seven, obviously I'd, I'd be perhaps handling it differently and, and in past have handled it differently. But I think whereas even as a single parent, I mean, I could, yes, there's no partner here with me to kind of go into the kitchen and quietly have a little word or a quiet breakdown. But equally, I could go and choose, you know, to, to shut the bathroom door and, and do it that way. But there have been times which very happy to hold my hands up and say, you know, I've, I've, I've been in tears, I've been exhausted. And, you know, I've let him see it because I just think it fosters quite a healthy, nurturing sort of way of bringing up a child that they can see. You know, it's, it's taught at school. It's it's taught and, you know, spoken about on social media, in the news. You know, mental health is, of course, incredibly important and it's OK to not be OK. We all we all know that and we all, we're all promoting that. But I think for a child, it's best really to come from their, their parents to see it, you know, firsthand, the person that they sort of rely on most you know what they're they're not always okay but that in itself is okay and mum will wake up tomorrow and it'll be a new day and things will be better Mm. it's that thing isn't it isn't it so Anna Green Gables are saying you know uh, today is a new day all fresh with no mistakes or something which I I quote on a regular (laughs) basis I don't know about the no mistakes but (laughs) I always say early I get it in before there's any mistakes on board that's the the 6 ever line (laughs) yeah you're so right and and what about Alex you know how is he doing and what does does he talk about you know these from his side of things or is he not sort of in that sort of mood he um well, he, he sort of, are you asking if he'd like to, to say anything? Or, well, or no, uh, no, I was just thinking about, you know, how he feels about, you were saying about, you know, you talk about it's not all right, yeah. know, it's okay to be, uh, it's all right not to be all right. And I just yeah. wondered how he responds to that when you've had he, those conversations. He's very, I'm very lucky. He is, he's a very, uh, just go with it child. So whether it's um, a positive thing and, you know, something fantastic has happened, you know, they, they won a football match or something, or if it is more challenging at the moment now, he does just seem to ride it out. So He's quite um quite sort of centred and balanced, which I'm, I'm sort of lucky with. But um, I mean, obviously there are times when when he misses his friends, etc. So, you know, when he does have those moments, he'll just sort of come to me, and whether he's perhaps just a bit quieter than normal, I'll just sort of pick up on it. So he won't perhaps say expressly outright that there's an issue. But um, I mean, 99% of the time, he he just gets on with it. But on those odd occasions, it's just just a case of listening and thinking, having having patience, which. When you've got a lot on your plate, so I must admit, I'm not always, um, I'm not the perfect parent. No, but, but who, I think it is really you know, important. Who is? Who is in the best of circumstances? And in these circumstances, uh, you know, pointing out what you said earlier about being kind to yourself, I think is a, yeah. is a huge thing. And it's not easy sometimes, is it? We're, no. I, I think, uh, well, I would argue perhaps as, as women, we're particularly good at this. You know, we can thrash ourselves at any time of the day or yeah. night about the things that we did wrong or should have done differently or why did we do this, why didn't we do that? Um, but it, it does us no favour and it's sort of trying to pick up those pieces and like you say dust yourself off right tomorrow's another day and absolutely on we go. <laughs> well look it's really interesting to speak to you uh, hats off to you for for continuing to you know to, to go for it and um and thanks so much for taking some time out of your extremely busy life no, it's a uh, pleasure to talk to us uh lovely to uh, to have that conversation with ellis ellis wolby then from cheltenham uh, the sort of experience uh the downs but also some of the ups of being a single parent and a full-time worker with the homeschooling thrown into the mix at these times.